In this module, we'll be talking about feeding your Bengal cats. Newsflash, Bengals eat, like, a lot. Like, at least twice a day, it's insane. You may think you're just getting a cat, but in reality, it's more like you're getting a toddler, only they never grow up. If you want to give your Bengal the best life possible, minimize behavioral issues, minimize health issues, then you'll definitely want to do a little research into what you're feeding them because there's a lot of less than ideal food on the market and you want to be educated about your choices. When it comes down to it, a lot of things can be linked to your cat's diet. If they're having behavioral issues, there's a chance they're not happy because of the food that they're eating. If they're having health issues, there's also a chance that those stem from their diet. There's a lot of options out there on the market and you'll definitely want to know what your options are so that you give your cats the best diet possible. I know you probably already know this, but cats in the wild eat meat. They're carnivores. This is really important to know because when you go shopping for cat food at the grocery store, they have everything but meat, it seems. All sorts of fruits, greens, vegetables, you name it, it's in cat food. A lot of these foods at the grocery stores contain a lot of additives. Both dry food and canned food contain a lot of coloring and flavoring agents. A lot of this is designed to fool humans, so we think that just because the label says cat food, then it's cat food. But our cats aren't fooled, their stomachs know that it's not meat. So the real question is, can cats eat all that food, digest it, and get all the nutrients that they need from that? So that leaves us to ask the question, what can you do to make sure that your Bengal is getting all their nutritional needs met in a way that is friendly with both your budget and your lifestyle? The first option you have is to feed your cat a raw diet. This is what I've been doing for my Bengals. So it might come as a surprise to you, but cats don't actually cook their meat in the wild. Not only do they eat their meat raw, but they also eat the bones, they eat the organs, you name it, they'll eat it. You might be thinking to yourself, do cats really eat bones? They do, actually. Cats can handle bones quite well. They do tend to eat animals that are digestible for them, so you don't see cats in the wild hunting cows. They usually hunt things like rabbit or mice. But so long as the bones aren't cooked, the cats handle them just fine and they even enjoy it. Before we go any further, let's rewind a little bit. Do not feed your cat cooked bones. This is very dangerous for cats and they can splinter and cause them a lot of harm. Let me say that again, don't cook the bones. I've been feeding my Bengals chopped up chicken bones for quite a while now, and while it's not always the first thing that they eat, they really do prefer the muscle meat. They do eat them. Eek! What about salmonella, you may be asking? So the way I understand it is that cats are far less sensitive to salmonella than we are. Many people feed their cats a raw diet, they don't worry about salmonella, and their cats are just fine. I'll get to the ratios and all that jazz in a minute, but first let's talk about some of the benefits of a raw diet. The first benefit of a raw diet is that it can be all meat. This means your cat's body knows exactly what to do with their food. No fruits, no vegetables, no grains, meat. Lots and lots of meat. Your cat's body knows what to do with meat. What was that? Did you say beets? No, meat. Not beets, meat. No fruits, no vegetables, no grains, just meat. What do we like to eat, Malik? Do we like berries? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Do we like nuts? Mm -mm -mm -mm. What do we like, Malik? Meat. I like meat. I like meat. Feed me meat, meat, meat. Yummy. Mm, meat. The second benefit of feeding your cat raw is water content. Cats in the wild, they really don't drink all that much water because they're getting it all from their meat. Raw meat actually has a fairly high water content. So if you're feeding your cat dry food or even canned food, a lot of times this tends to dehydrate them as it doesn't have much water in it, and your cat doesn't know to go drink extra water out of its water bowl because that's not natural to it. By feeding your cat a raw diet, they're staying as hydrated as possible, which helps to prevent many health conditions, especially things such as UTIs. I'm sure if you're buying a Bengal, you plan to love it a lot and you really don't want it having health issues. So it's probably a good idea to make sure that your cat is well hydrated. And one way to do this is by feeding them a really great diet. So about a year ago, I was getting ready to go to work in the morning and Malik was on the toilet peeing, which that's what he does normally. And then about 10 minutes later, he was trying to pee. And then the third time, 10 minutes later, he was trying to pee again and I realized that he hasn't been peeing. 
I could tell that he was in a lot of discomfort and I didn't want that for him at all. So I decided to take him to the vet since there was a chance he could have a blockage and that could be life-threatening. And the vet said that they took a sample of his pee and the pH was either too high or too low, I can't remember. But she said he was severely dehydrated. So they ended up putting him on an IV to get him some fluids and then that made his pee burn less. But the conclusion that I came to was that because he was eating a half dry diet, it was dehydrating him a little bit too much and he wasn't drinking extra water to make up for it. So I switched him back to a 100% meat diet and that problem has not resurfaced. The third benefit of a raw diet is about, okay, no really, it's actually about poop. It has to do with their bowel elasticity. So when cats eat a dry kibble diet, it tends to have a lot of fiber in it and it's very expanded for long periods of time. So their intestines are used to being that way. And when you're on a raw diet, it doesn't do that. So a lot of cats that have been fed a commercial pet food their entire life, they don't have a lot of bowel elasticity left, which means that you need to add a little bit of fiber to their food, otherwise things won't be moving along, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so if you try to feed your Bengals a raw diet from the start, and a lot of breeders do do this as a rule of thumb, they should be able to maintain that the rest of their life with no problems. The next benefit of a raw diet is that it keeps your cat's teeth clean. I have read that cats don't actually need to go to the dentist to have their teeth cleaned. Well, maybe cats on commercial diets do, but if your cats are eating raw, this in theory should keep their teeth clean naturally. And when they chew the meat and they chew on the bones, it helps keep all the tartar and plaque and all that bad stuff off of their teeth. So it's really great. Now, my cats are still only three years old, so their teeth are still pretty clean, but I'll report back to you in about 15 years and let you know if they've had to go to the vet to get their teeth cleaned. The next benefit is a raw diet is much more rewarding to your bingle. Cats often get possessive over things that they think are valuable. So if a cat isn't getting possessive over its dry kibble, and most cats don't, it probably means that it's not of a lot of value to that cat. When I started feeding my cats a raw diet, they're much more possessive about their food. The ground raw food, they're not as possessive over, but as soon as you give them a raw chicken leg or something like that, they get really possessive over it and they huff at each other because they think it's really valuable and they don't want any other cat to have it. This makes eating for them a much more rewarding experience. So one time I thought it'd be fun to feed the cats a whole chicken leg just to see what would happen. So I tossed the leg down on the plate and I went about my business and then I looked and it was gone. I didn't know where it went. I started looking for the cats everywhere. I just knew that they probably drugged the raw chicken all over the carpets and under the bed, but I looked under the bed and they weren't there. It turns out they had drugged the chicken bone a few feet away from their plate and they hid it behind a guitar. You might see the case of the runaway diner when you start your cats on a raw diet. They wanna go eat their food in private, not on the tidy little plate that you provided for them. Next is weight maintenance. Most all house cats that I have known have had a problem with their weight. Especially as they start to get older, they start packing on the pounds. So long as you're feeding your cat a raw diet, you shouldn't really have to worry about their weight too much. At least that's the case with my Bengals. I can give them as much food as they want and they don't seem to gain a pound. There are times where my Bengals don't eat all their food and there's also times where I feed them a good amount and they still want more. So for the most part, I try to trust their bodies. So long as I'm feeding them real food, raw meat, they don't tend to overeat. I've also known cats that were on a dry kibble diet and switched to raw and instantly they started shedding the pounds. All this stuff about kitten food and adult cat food and senior food, it's all a bunch of BS and cats in the wild eat meat when they're kittens, adults, and elderly. You do not need different types of food for all these different scenarios. Just feed your cat a real food diet. The next benefit of a raw diet is the fact that your Bengals will have a very silky coat. Now Bengals already have a little bit of what people call glitter in their fur and this gives them a very silky appearance but this will be even more pronounced when your cat is eating raw. 
Oftentimes when a cat doesn't look very healthy and it's very, very coarse and it's not getting the nutrients that it needs. Every single person that comes over to my house pets the bangles and they comment on how silky their coats are because they've never seen anything like it. And I have to tell them it's strictly the raw food. My mom put her cats on a raw food diet and within maybe a couple of weeks she was calling me telling me, oh my gosh, I can't believe how silky their coats are. I also think feeding your cats a raw diet makes them extremely cute. <laughs> Look how silky I am. See all this fur? Ooh, I'm so soft. Look how silky that coat is. <laughs> See all that silk? It also makes the spots on their belly soft. <laughs> and the last point I want to bring up Yes, it has to do with poop again. When cats eat a raw diet, they're able to utilize most all the nutrients that they're eating, so their waste is actually fairly small. When cats eat commercial cat food, there's a lot of bulk and filler in there, not to mention all the preservatives and artificial colors, flavors, and your cat's body really has no use for those, so they just pass them out. It's also been reported that your cat's poop doesn't smell as bad on a raw diet. Now I'm not saying it smells like roses, but it definitely doesn't smell as bad as if they're eating a commercial diet. Okay, and one more last benefit. You have total control over what they eat. So I don't know about you, but I don't have time to look at all those food labels and to go to the internet to figure out what each one of those ingredients is. Instead, I could just use my best judgment and I know exactly what my cats are eating. I don't have to worry about it at all. My poop doesn't smell at all. I mean, my poop doesn't smell at all. <laughs> okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about what your options are for feeding your cat raw. The first option is to feed your cats a ground raw food diet that you can make in advance. This is my go-to method of food preparation because I have a busy life and it's really nice to make it in advance rather than having to make it as I go. What I do is make about four chickens worth at a time and I just put it all in the freezer. So all I need to do is pull it out, thaw it, which sometimes I do overnight or I'll do it maybe a couple hours before I feed them, scoop it out and I'm able to pull out just what I need because you really don't want raw meat sitting in the fridge for more than a couple days at a time. The recipe that I use is by Lisa A. Pearson and I'll link to that recipe below in this video so that you have access to it. And it's really quite straightforward. The ingredients are chicken, egg yolks, water, organs, vitamin A, vitamin D, salt, and if you don't have access to a lot of these things such as heart or liver or the organs, there are supplements you can use instead, although it really is better if you can get the real thing. Honestly, making the food is pretty disgusting. It's my least favorite chore and I never look forward to it. I always dread it, but when I'm done, it's never that bad. So what you need to do is first chop up the chicken with a meat cleaver, and this is very unsexy. I try to wear an apron and I try to clean off all the counters first because meat juice goes everywhere. In your eye, on your lip, in your ear, everywhere. Once I chop up the meat, you stick it in a meat grinder, it comes out the other end. Then you need to mix the egg yolk and the water and all the vitamins. Mix that all up, it smells really delicious. Put it in your bowls and you're done. This whole process takes me by myself maybe a couple hours, and if I have help, we can do it in an hour tops. Another note too is cats really do prefer their food mousy temperature. Cats really aren't a fan when you give them cold food as this isn't natural in the wild. After their kill in the wild, the meat is still quite warm. So this is not always ideal on a raw food diet as we don't always have time to heat up their food and you definitely don't want to cook it or put it in a microwave. So what some people do is take out the food and set it in warm water until it's pretty warm and then give it to their bingles. What I tend to do is feed them cold and then they usually go visit their food and then maybe within 30 minutes they come back when it's a little warmer to eat. Now you might be afraid of setting your food out for your bingle to eat at its will. You might be worried that it's going to sit out too long and grow bacteria and all sorts of stuff like that. 
but in my experience, the bangles do tend to eat it sometimes over a couple of hours, and after a certain length of time, they don't touch it anymore. If they're hungry, they'll ask for new food. So I try to trust them, and I think that they wouldn't eat food that's bad for them, so long as I give them other options. Now, if you starve your bangle, and that food's been sitting out for two days, they might eat it, so try not to do that. Now another diet I've looked into and I've experimented with for my bangles is something called Prey Model Raw. And that's something I'll link to below this video as well so that you can have some information on that. And that has the same idea as what I just talked about, except you're feeding them the meat in its most natural state possible. So instead of grinding up the chicken and adding the organs and the vitamins you, and freezing it, you would just give them the meat straight. So you might take a whole chicken, cut it up, and give them a little bit of bone, a little bit of meat, a little bit of muscle meat, but they actually have to chew it a little harder. So this can be difficult because you need to worry about getting the proportions right. I believe the proportions are 80 to 85% muscle meat, 5% bone, 10% organs with half of that being liver. Now you don't need to give them all these proportions on every single meal, but it is important that they get something close to this throughout their diet. So when I was feeding my cats prey model raw, I would try to calculate out the proportions and feed that to them over a week. And you need to experiment too, because things like bone can really constipate your cat and liver can do the exact opposite. My two Bengals have very different digestive systems. Malik tends to get diarrhea very easily, and Nikolai seems to always be constipated. So if I fed them a little bit too much bone, Nikolai wouldn't go to the bathroom for like four days, and if I feed them less bone, now one of the cats has diarrhea. So I have found that by feeding them the ground raw diet, it's a lot easier to control what they're eating, and I could tweak it ever so slightly to keep both cats digestive systems happy. Another thing that I found was really difficult was finding the right organs. Things like heart and liver you can usually find at the grocery store, but other organs, those aren't anywhere. I even went to a local butcher in a big city and they didn't have any of the organs that I needed. So this was really hard and I didn't want to feed them supplements and it caused me a lot of anxiety, not to mention a lot of time to research. I did not have a large freezer to put all this meat in. So it was really better just to make it a lot at a time. There is one website that I hear people talk about often. It's called Hair Today and you can order all sorts of organs for your cats to eat. And I believe you can also order pre-made raw cat food. Now I haven't personally ordered from this site, but if I explore Prey Model Raw in the future, I definitely will and I'll probably buy a lot of the organs that I can't find in the grocery stores in bulk. So those are two options on how to feed your cat a raw diet, but if for some reason or another that's not an option to you, let's talk a little bit about your commercial cat food options. The last option is to feed your Bengal a really high quality dry or canned cat food. Now if you have a choice between dry cat food and wet cat food, I would definitely opt for the wet cat food. When I was doing my research, a can of wet cat food cost anywhere from a dollar or two dollars, and my Bengals eat a lot. So I'd ran some quick numbers and I was estimating that this might be about $60 per cat per month. That might be a little high, but it might not. I know that feeding them a raw diet doesn't cost anywhere near that much money. The wet cat food is really ideal because like I said earlier, getting your bangle enough water can be a huge issue. So the more water you can give them through their food, the better it's going to be for your bangle's health. When I moved my bangles, I didn't want to deal with trying to keep them on a raw food diet throughout the move because I had so much other stuff to worry about and I was going to be on the road for a few days. And having limited space, I didn't think I'd be able to take a cooler to keep their food cold. So what I did was put them on the highest quality wet food that I can find. And while they did like it, it was like cat crack to them. They started acting really crazy. They couldn't eat enough of it. So I felt like there's some sort of drug in there that they were addicted to, kind of like kids when you give them candy. Just because they want it and they want to eat a lot of it doesn't mean that it's good for them. The next option, if high quality wet food isn't an option for your bangles, is high quality dry food. Now what you'll need to do for this is check the labels on the cat food because there's all sorts of ingredients that hide in there. Just because the label says made with real chicken, that's probably not the only ingredient. I have heard that you want to really check the first five ingredients on the label and if all of them are meat, that's a really good sign. But if the first ingredient is corn or soy, probably not a good food for your cat. There are some brands out there that I use over others. Blue Buffalo is one, 
I know people that have moved their cats from a really cheap cat food to something like Blue Buffalo and their cats have lost a lot of weight and got silkier coats. So while it might not be a raw diet, it's still a lot better for your cat. If you're feeding your cats a dry kibble diet, you're going to really want to make sure that they're getting enough water. So one way you can do this is set out something a little more flavorful than water for them. One thing might be chicken broth and that way your cats might be a little more encouraged to drink. Keep in mind that dry cat food will probably increase your cat's odds for developing urinary tract infection. And when you take them to the vet for this, this could be anywhere from $100 to $200. I know this from personal experience and that's not money that I budgeted for cat health. So while you may think that you're saving money by feeding your cat a dry kibble diet, you really might want to think about the long-term results of that and is it really cheaper and is it really better for your cat's health. For a while I was feeding my cats a half raw and a half high quality dry kibble diet because I was concerned that they weren't getting all the nutrition that they needed. Long story short, Malik was having recurring urinary tract infections. Frequently he was straining to go to the bathroom and it really worried me a lot. The time I took him to the vet for it, she said that he was severely dehydrated and that he wasn't getting enough water. Since then, my cats have been on a 100% raw diet and they haven't had any issues and it's been over a year. So I really want to reinforce if you absolutely have to feed your bangle a dry kibble diet, really read the labels like you would your own food. You want to make sure that at least the first five ingredients are all meat and you really want to make sure that there's no grains in their food. You'll also need to be sure that your cat is getting sufficient water. So you might be thinking, this all sounds really great and I'm totally sold on a raw food diet, but this has to be a lot of money and a lot of effort. I was also very intimidated once I decided I should probably feed my cats a raw food diet because I thought the same thing. I thought it was going to cost me a fortune and I was going to spend hours every single week just preparing their food, but I was willing to do it. As far as effort, there is effort required up front to make sure that you understand what you're feeding your bangles and to make sure that they're getting all their nutritional needs met. If you make your cats ground raw food, you only need to make it every once in a while and you can make as much as you can handle at one time. I can only manage about four chickens. One time I had access to a commercial kitchen. It was huge and I made a lot and that was awesome because it lasted me for a very long time. When I prepare cat food, I prepare four chickens at a time and this lasts my two bangles about seven to eight weeks and it's only about an hour or two of my time. When I was feeding my cat's prey model raw, I spent a lot of time researching because I was really concerned about the ratios and making sure they were getting what they needed. I was also doing a lot of manual calculations to figure out what they needed for their weight and based on how active they are. So this was a lot of work. It also took a little bit of time every single week to portion out their meals and make sure they were getting what they needed. A lot of times too, they wouldn't eat maybe the bone, so I didn't know whether to save it for the next meal or to throw it away or what. So it was a lot of time spent monitoring their food to make sure they were eating everything. So to sum up the effort, I would say that it's fairly minimal. And if you want your bangle to have the healthiest life possible, I think it's totally worth every minute of it. And as far as the cost, it's actually not all that bad. Like I said earlier, if you're planning on feeding your cats a commercial wet food, this adds up as every little can can cost maybe a dollar or two dollars. So if your cat's eating one or two of those a day, that definitely adds up to maybe $60 a month or more if you have two cats. Dry kibble is definitely the cheapest option, but like I said, if you feed your cat dry food and they're not getting a lot of water, you may be in the vet's office frequently for urinary tract infections. So that can be $100 to $200 every single visit. Here is a very rough breakdown of price. If you do your homework and you buy at the right time, you can probably get whole chickens for about 99 cents a pound. I usually don't do this as I have lots of other things that I'm worrying about, so it might end up being about $1.40 a pound. When I buy chickens, I usually buy them about four at a time. So this usually runs me about 20 to $30, somewhere in there. You also have to buy all of their supplements. I believe when I bought all of them, it cost me around $60. And some of them, like taurine, I had to buy very frequently. And others I haven't bought, and it's been three years because the bottle was so big. The other thing that you'll need to buy are eggs. I believe this is about $40 a month for my bangles, which is really great. I never thought I'd be able to feed two cats a raw diet for under $50 a month. Oh yeah, I also don't have any vet bills. So 
to sum all this up, I know you're going to love your bangle cut to pieces and you want to give it the best diet that you can. So I hope some of this information helped and I hope that it'll enable you to make the best decision for you, your bangle, and your lifestyle. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to the next lesson. Below this video, I've provided some links that I hope are helpful to you to websites, recipes, products that I use and I like and work really, really well, and anything else that I hope you find useful.